Eric. What's going on, brother? How are you? Good, and yourself? Not bad, not bad. Uh, did you buy a house yet in uh, Arizona? Not yet, dude. The housing market out there is wild right now, dude. So I don't think it. Uh, I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. <laughs> well, I'll uh, keep sending good vibes your way. I appreciate it. Uh, speaking of Arizona, I mean, you you did this camp out there. Um, how'd that go? Man, it went well. Um, training with a lot of high-level guys, you know, and of course. Uh, Eddie Chaw and Santino's reputation like definitely precedes itself so um, it's just up to me to go out there and put everything uh, in, that I've learned and trained and put together into the actual fight. What's it like seeing all these superstars come to that gym? Uh, it's, it's awesome you know you see, uh, all these guys and girls like their energy is so great and you know you can kind of like pick their brain and see what it is that you know, makes them great. You know, what is it that makes John Jones great? Outside of like the, the physical attributes, you know? You know, what makes them tick? You know, um, how do they train? How do they prepare their mindset? You know, Cejudo, you know, it's gonna be hard to find like a more accomplished guy uh, in combat sports than him. You know, John Jones is in and out. Yuri's in and out, you know, he's getting ready to fight for the belt. So, you know, it's just uh, some of these people, it's, uh, it's awesome to be able to like pick their brain and what makes you you. Like how, how is it that you compete on such a high level? And I think most of all is, is what makes them uh, uh, consistent. How do you win consistently? How do you go out there and fight in and fight out and fight consistently? And you know, you've been in locker rooms your whole entire life. Um, you know, come from Alabama, one of the best the best college football team of all time. Um, I guess kind of compare and contrast like that locker room compared to re fight ready right now um uh, it, it's like apples and oranges you know because there is no more hostile environment uh than a locker room you know it's especially like you have 125 guys in the locker room who that's what they do is talk about you make fun of you and you know but it kind of builds camaraderie and the same thing uh you know, there is like, like with football, everybody has to go to the locker room to change and stuff. But, you know, with MMA, I may show up to the gym already. So, you know, before practice, we may get the jarring and talking and, you know, all that. So they're similar, but like the magnitude is, is much different, you know. Right. Um, obviously, your last fight you didn't go your way, but uh, I just wanted to know what did you take from that fight? Um. You know, nothing I didn't already know. I felt good. I felt prepared. Um, I hate to say, like, nothing he did surprised me. Uh, he was a little bit stronger um, than I thought he would be, but, um, you know, it's just a game of inches, you know. One inch my way, one inch his way, you know. And you know, I get out of an arm bar versus tap into an arm bar. So, you know, just the margin of error is so small that, you know, you really can't afford any mistakes. With you being in with Andre now, um, is he as good as everyone hyped him, hyped him up to be? Um, you know, he he tapped me. You know, that's the first time I've been tapped, and uh, you know, maybe the second time I've been tapped in like you know forty something fights, amateur and pro. So, you know, I think that says a lot, um, especially tapping me the same way that he tapped Jacare just to fight the way that I knew. He just, man, he's uh, deceptive, I guess. So, yeah, dude, you're in, you're in trouble if uh, he puts you on the ground. Your last two fights have been in front of sold out arenas, going back at the, going back to the apex. Um, I mean, what's the feeling like? I know that you love to fight in front of fans. Now you're fighting back at the apex. What's the feeling like? Um, I, I love the small cage. You know, I think um, some of the fights that I've lost in the past had it been in a smaller cage. Um, you know, I probably get these wins, you know, because there's not a whole lot of point fighting. And if you look at the the ratio of finishes from the big cage to the to the apex cage, dude, there's a lot more finishes in that little cage than there are in the the, the big cage. So, you know, I prefer uh, perfect scenario for me. They would take that little cage to the arenas with the sold out arenas and stuff, but. Um, 
you know, that's not the reality. So we all kind of, we're all in the same cage, fighting under the same, you know, kind of situation or scenario or whatever. So, uh, but for me and my style and the way I like to fight, the, the small cage is uh, perfect for me. Awesome. Um, Chang Young Park, what do you think of him as an opponent? Um, he's well-rounded, you know, he's got, you know, several wins in the UFC, um, many different ways too, you know, you've seen him wrestle guys, you've seen him beat him up from the top, um, his striking is good, his wrestling is good, but um, I just think that I'm better and I'll be, you know, too much for him at the, uh, come Saturday. How do you see yourself getting your hand raised on Saturday? Um, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if you saw a submission attempt or two out of me. You know, um, I think that he'll like to wrestle um, just because it's probably a little bit safer uh, for him, especially after how his last fight went. But, you know, however the fight goes, I'm prepared, you know, on the feet, on the ground, against the cage, however it goes. Good luck. Thank you. Did you take that last fight on short notice? Uh, like the opponent, yeah, but not really because I was training for somebody else. And I got COVID, so I had to, you know, be on ice for like two weeks. And then they called me, and I think I had like three weeks to get ready for Andre. But, you know, I was already in shape and, you know, uh, kind of not really. So does that kind of change uh, how you feel about short notice fights? I know you're saying it kind of was, kind of wasn't. Would you, would you take another fight in that kind of circumstance? I almost prefer short notice fights. Um, just because it's like, okay, show up, train, fight. You know, I've been gone for eight weeks. I've been training. I've been dieting for eight weeks. You know, I've been doing everything. Eight weeks, you know, it gets kind of long sometimes, you know. So, um, yeah, and I, you know, I've had some pretty, you know, good fights on short notice, you know. So, um, either or. And it's been about six months, I think, since you fought. Is that like a good amount of time, or would you have preferred to fight sooner? Um, I could have fought sooner, but uh, you know, my neck was giving me problems, so I had to get that fixed, and you know, had some procedures and stuff done. So uh, you know, it, it really helps your performance if you fight healthy. You know, and uh, just wanted to make sure that I was healthy and 100% coming into this one. And I've been asking all the fighters about betting odds. I'm wondering if you pay attention to that at Hell all. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think Vegas got this one wrong, man. They got me a plus 180. So, you know, I've been telling the wife and the and the team and everybody, hey, this this the ticket you want to cash. Have you ever bet on yourself? I have. Yeah. Do you plan on doing that this time? Yeah. Can you divulge yeah. how much you're gonna put down? Uh, <laughs> Ballpark figure. Ah, uh, man, I probably put a thousand on it plus 180 and then you know that'll be my drinking tab on Saturday night thank you you could throw down a thousand dollars or is that just Vegas pricing no that's what I'm gonna put down <laughs> when, when you see that and then you got the they got the betting guys eat clearly in your mind going the opposite way of where it should be is that the kind of thing that just fires you up or is that just more funny that you're just like oh man I'm I'm gonna stick it to some people. Or does that actually light a fire under you? I mean, um, yeah, you know, plus 180, you know, that's pretty big. And I think he's minus 220. Um, at the end of the day, it's like external stuff that has nothing to do once the fight starts. But, you know, just, you know, a little something to, to think about and, you know, catch a little extra ticket. When you were given his, his name, did you know much about him? I mean, was this a fight that excited you or is it, you just really want to get back in there and just kind of erase that past one. You just want to get back to action. Or were you excited actually when you got this name? Man, I'm, I'm excited to fight anybody. You know, everybody in the middleweight division is tough. Everybody's good. Everybody's well-rounded, you know. Um, the opponent to me doesn't matter. They could have, you know, offered anybody. And, and I would have been just as excited for one guy versus the next. And you talked about you like the short notice fights. You know, you, you don't like to, you know, think too much ahead. but. Going back to the football career, you know, you were able to see your whole schedule laid out, at least for that year. Other promotions, you know, when they do the tournaments, they can kind of see the path. If I get through this guy, I know who the next one is. Is there, do you see a benefit in something like that? If you could see a clear path, if you knew exactly, if you got through this next opponent, that if you knew your opponents were laid out, 
would that be something that you would be into? Do you think that would be maybe something beneficial if you knew what the path was for you? Um, I think it's really hard to do that. Um, one, because you no know, telling how the fight's going to go. I could break my hand and then I'm done for, you know, however long it takes your hand to heal. Or, you know, you can get hurt in the fight, you can get hurt in training. So, man, you even see it all the time. Like, guys will have fights scheduled three, four months ahead of time and then get hurt. And now they're finding replacements and short notice guys. So, I think with football, like you have in college, you have 125 guys. So if your quarterback gets hurt, number two slides in, you know, like the train keeps moving. Um, and I guess it does for the UFC as well. But, you know, um, I think it should would be really hard to, to plan, you know, when I'm a fight again. Uh, I could go out there and knock them out in 10 seconds and I'm ready to go tomorrow. Or it could be a 15 minute, three round war, you know, my face is all busted up, you know, my hands all busted up. I got to sit down for a few months. So um, it's just, I don't know, I think it's a little bit more difficult. Sure. How does the body feel and how does it overall feel in this transition now that you've become a, a full time fighter, the preparation and the constant going back in the gym? How does the body feel and do you feel now that your physicality, you are a fighter as opposed to a athlete that just started doing fighting. Yeah, you know, I've been doing this for like 10 years now, you know. Um, half of that's in the UFC. This will be my fifth year on the roster. So, yeah, this will be my 14th or 15th fight. So, yeah, you know, I think I've definitely evolved into uh, a fighter rather than an athlete who just picked up gloves. And, um, and I think you've seen that over my career. You know, I've encompassed uh, – wrestling into my game, jiu-jitsu into my game, boxing, kickboxing. You know, when I first started, I refused to throw kicks, you know. You know, now I got, you know, head kick knockouts and stuff. So uh, I think I've definitely evolved as a fighter. Maybe that's part of the answer is the head kick thing. If, you, if there's something that you look back upon in this time, this growth, what is, what's maybe what's the biggest thing that you're proud of when you look at the growth that you've exhibited in, in this sport? Uh, just everything, you know, I think when I first started, even when I first got to the UFC, I would just bite down and, you know, yeah. it's meet in the middle on this brawl, you know. Um, but as I've grown, I think I've taken more of a tactical approach, um, developed a, like, a, like a real skill set, um, and grown in every facet of the game. So I guess looking at this fight, I mean, what's the goal? Is it to get a big emphatic finish or is it just get a solid W and, and, and get back on the winning winning path I mean obviously I do you know I don't get paid by the hour so if I can go out there and get them out of there in round one you know that's ideal but I mean I think a win goes a long way where would the celebration party be here in Vegas uh, I don't know just yet but you know it'll definitely be out somewhere that's for sure awesome best of luck on Saturday